My name is Danica. I'm an associate editor at Book Riot, and today I want to talk to you about some of the books out this week on May 11th. The first is Cool for the Summer by Dahlia Adler. Laura has had eyes for exactly one person through her three years of high school, Chase Harding. He's tall, strong, sweet, a football star. Oh, and he's talking to her now, on purpose and everything. Maybe flirting even? No wait, he is definitely flirting. Which is pretty much the sum of everything Laura's wanted out of life, except that she's haunted by a memory. A memory of a confusing, romantic, strangely perfect summer spent with a girl named Jasmine. A memory that becomes a disorienting present when Jasmine herself walks through the doors of her high school. Lara has everything she ever wanted. A tight-knit group of friends, a job that borders on cool, and Chase, the boy of her literal dreams. But if she's finally got the guy, why can't she stop thinking about the girl? Cool for the Summer is a story of self-discovery and new love. It's about the things we want and the things we we need. And it's about the people who let us be who we are. So this is one of my most anticipated new releases of the year. Dahlia Adler, on top of being an excellent author, also runs LGBTQ Reads, which is the go-to source for anything queer YA. I am beside myself with excitement to read about this bisexual love triangle from an expert in the genre. By the time you watch this, I will already have read it and I'm sure loved it. Also, just having this arc has gotten the song stuck in my head for months. Next is Black Water Sister by Zen Cho. When Jess starts hearing a voice in her head, she chalks it up to stress. Closeted, broke, and jobless, she's moving back to Malaysia with her parents, a country she last saw when she was a toddler. She soon learns that the voice is the ghost of her estranged grandmother. In life, Ama was a spirit medium, avatar of a mysterious deity called the Black Water Sister. Now she's determined to settle a score against someone who offended the god, and she has decided that Jess is going to help her with that, whether Jess wants to or not. Drawn into a world of gods, ghosts, and family secrets, Jess finds that making deals with capricious spirits is a dangerous business, but dealing with her grandmother is just as complicated. Especially when Ama spies on her personal life, threatens to spill her secrets to her family, and uses her body to commit felonies. As Jess fights for retribution for Ama, she'll also need to gain control of her body and destiny, or the Blackwater sister might finish her off for good. So this is from the author of Sorcerer to the Crown. This is a contemporary fantasy starring a lesbian zillennial who fights gods, ghosts, gangsters, and grandmas, according to the author. So what more could you want? Then there's People We Meet on Vacation by Emily Henry. Poppy and Alex, Alex and Poppy. They have nothing in common. She's a wild child. He wears khakis. She has insatiable wanderlust. He prefers to stay home with a book. And somehow, ever since a fateful car share back from college years ago, they are the very best of friends. For most of the year, they live far apart. She is in New York City, he is in their small hometown. But every summer, for a decade, they have taken one glorious week of a vacation together, until two years ago when they've ruined everything and haven't spoken since. Poppy has everything she should want, but she is stuck in a rut. When someone asks when she was last truly happy, she knows without a doubt it was on that ill-fated final trip with Alex. And so she decides to convince her best friend to take one last vacation together, lay everything on the table, and make it right. Miraculously, he agrees, and now she has one week to fix everything. If only she can get around the one big truth that has always stood quietly in the middle of their seemingly perfect relationship, what could possibly go wrong? So this is from the best-selling author of Beach Read, and this promises to be another perfectly summer read. So whether trips are a possibility for you anytime soon or not, this is supposed to be a read that gives you the same feelings as a really good vacation. It's full of road trips, romance tropes, and 90s rom-com vibes. So if you liked Beach Read, definitely check this one out. Next up is Son of the Storm by Suyi Davies Okunboa. In the thriving city of Bassa, Danso is a clever but disillusioned scholar who longs for a life outside of the rigid obligations of the city elites. A way out presents itself when Lilong, the skin-changing warrior, shows up wounded in his barn. She comes from the nameless islands, which according to Bassa lore don't exist, and neither should the mythical magic of Ibor that she wields. Now swept into a conspiracy far beyond his understanding, they will set out on a journey that reveals histories violently suppressed, and magic only found in lore. This is the first book in an epic fantasy series that is inspired by the pre-colonial empires of West Africa. This is supposed to have a vibrant setting, an intricate 
politics and world building. There are a multiple point of view characters and all of them are complex and flawed. Then I have Switch by A.S. King. Time has stopped. It's been June 23rd, 2020 for almost a year as far as anyone can tell. Frantic adults demand that teenagers find practical solutions to the world's crisis. Not everyone is on board though. Javelin throwing prodigy Truda is pretty sure that the solution time in her classes isn't going to solve the problem, but she does have a few ideas what might. Truda lives in a home with a switch that no one ever touches, a switch her father protects every day by nailing a series of hundreds of progressively larger boxes onto it. But Truda's got a crowbar, and one way or another, she's going to find out what happens when she flips the switch. So time stopping for a year has never felt more relatable. A.S. King is a beloved author who writes fabulous, imaginative, mind-bending reads. This one is told in a stream of consciousness style with slashes instead of punctuation. It's a book about isolation and human connection, and it's dedicated to the class of 2020. Next is When Justice Sleeps by Stacey Abrams. Avery is a law clerk for the legendary justice Howard Wynn. She's doing her best to hold her life together, excelling in an arduous job with the court, while also dealing with a troubled family, when the shocking news breaks that Justice Wynn, the cantankerous swing vote in many high-profile cases, has slipped into a coma, Avery's life turns upside down. She's immediately notified that Wynn has given her power of attorney. Plunged into a role she never anticipated, Avery finds that Wynn has been secretly researching one of the most controversial cases before the court. She also finds that Wynn suspected a dangerously related conspiracy, one that infiltrates the highest power corridors of Washington. As political wrangling ensues to try to replace Wynn, Avery begins to unravel a carefully constructed, chess-like series of clues that Wynn left for her. She comes to see that Wynn had a much more personal stake in the controversial case, and realizes his complex puzzle will lead her directly into harm's way to find the truth. So yes, this is that Stacey Abrams. She is using her inside knowledge of the political landscape to create a thriller set in the halls of the U.S. Supreme Court. Lastly is Stone Fruit by Lee Lai. Braun and Ray are a queer couple who enjoy their role as the fun weirdo aunts to Ray's niece, six-year-old Nessie. Their playdates are little oasises of joy and wildness in all three of their lives. As their emotional intimacy erodes, Ray and Braun isolate from each other and attempt to repair their broken family ties. Ray with her overworked, resentful single mother sister, and Braun with her religious teenage sister who doesn't fully grasp the complexities of her gender identity. Taking a leap of faith, each opens up and learn they have more in common with their siblings than they ever knew. At turns joyful and heartbreaking, Stone Fruit reveals how painful it can be to be truly vulnerable, especially with your family, and how fulfilling it is to be finally understood for who you are. So I just finished reading this one and it was such an emotional read. I really enjoyed it. It can feel a little bit bleak at times. It's really dealing with mental health, with complicated and flawed relationships, both with family and romantically. There are also real moments of hope and it just feels very real. One of the main characters is also trans. So this is a queer graphic novel that I highly recommend. And those are all the books that I have for you today. Let me know in the comments if you're looking forward to reading any of these or if there's another book out this week that you're excited about. And if you've watched all the way to the end, please leave me a summer related emoji for cool for the summer. And until next time, happy reading! Uh-oh, here she comes. Lie down. Go lie down. I was actually just telling you to be quiet, though. Go lie down. All right, here's Lola. I know everyone missed her. Hi, Lola. <laughs>